Uh, my, my, Yo, what ooh, the fuck my body's is on fire. Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys. How is everyone doing? How are you guys doing today? Okay, so we actually had a lot of trouble connecting. David, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't know what is happening with your your laptop. Uh, I think check that laptop. I don't know no, if it's the doing right. It, it's doing perfect. Uh, your te gonna... your tech your technology is I don't know. We're not <laughs> we're not back in the fifties or sixties right now. So no, do you no, see no. me? Do you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah, I hear you five on five. So what we're gonna do right now, David? We're just gonna go ahead and share the live broadcast. Leap, yes, thank you for staying. Oh my god, <laughs> I've been sitting right here. My, 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 yeah, what, Ooh, my body's on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's going on? I was like, I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I was in K Town right now, Kumba, oh boy, uh, in one of those cyber cafes trying to like check my email for two hours, checking emails. <laughs> That was back then. That was like 15 years ago, 16 years ago. <laughs> Look, Chris, Technology Chris. is far gone right now. <laughs> Look, Chris, are you serious? You cannot see anything for you real? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, stop being stop <laughs> joking. Thank you so much, Sis Leith Kevin. Thank you for the hearts. Hey, as you come in, just give me likes. Hit that like button, share, guys. David is on. We're on right now. We're smashing it. We're smashing it, guys. Okay, so... um. <laughs> Welcome to this other edition of Spotlight. You know how sometimes you plan your things, you pray hard, and then some other marabouts, those people that they call apprentices or see, they sit in the background and they start praying. <laughs> they say, eh, so this guy now we get all the packs. What does he want to show? So now you have packs, so what? Eh? You want to go again on air, on Spotlight, and go and show your apps again. Ah, my brother, it's not going to happen. You know, so I like now. <laughs> You know, you know what we used to call in those days when we small say I don't pin finger. They don't pin finger say it today so how are you I'm gonna show that I have the online now so hey no those uh, the apps people would check them on my on my platform right now we, oh, we want to talk yeah okay, look, look, so good means good so we're good to go right now let's let's dive into it hey David so okay let's do this what, what's popping guy what's up man how you doing now how you doing? Hey. It's crazy. Um, right now, um, with the coronavirus, especially in, in New York City, I know all over the world, everyone is suffering because of the coronavirus. Everyone is like indoors and you have to quarantine. But um, in New York City, it's the epicenter. It's crazy out there. It's like it's one of the the worst cities um, yeah, to what, be right now. But it's getting better. It's, it's getting really better. getting better right now. Um, Thanks, thanks to the nurses and the first responders, especially our governor. Our governor should run for the president next time. The next election, I think Cuomo is going to be hmm. running. He is really effective. He is one of, uh, everyone loves Cuomo. <laughs> even, even if you're not a New Yorker, you're going to love Cuomo. Oh. So we, I think, think, yeah, um, the coronavirus is, is just like, it's crazy. Uh, keeping New Yorkers indoors. New Yorkers, they never stay indoors. So what we've been staying saying? indoors that's for the past three that months now. On 24 hours a day. I was in New York. Yeah, city so never New York. sleeps. So, and, and that's for me, that's yeah. my favorite city in the world. Like for me, nothing else matters than New York. Like anytime I think about any place where I want to be, is New York. I miss New York like crazy. I miss that noise. I miss that hustle and bustle. You know, when you're in New yeah. York, you feel different. It didn't like say you don't talk about yes. it. didn't like say life not happen. Like nothing else matters. Oh, uh, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. anywhere. If you can make it in New York, you anywhere. make it anywhere. Okay, guys. Yeah. That's the jungle. Okay. Hit that like button, guys. Hit that like button. Let's have more people come on board. Um, your your guest today, our guest today is David So, celebrity fitness coach and trainer based out there in New York City. He's Cameroonian. For those who are sending me inbox messages, asking me if he's Cameroonian, yes, il est Camerounais. Bienvenue, bienvenue dans cette autre édition de Spotlight. Okay. Um, notre notre invité aujourd'hui est un talentueux Camerounais. Um, oh là là, il a un corps de rêve. Comme on dit souvent la corde de rêve, là, il est, you know, 
Il n'est pas comme une guitare, hein, mais il a des arts, you know, les, les, les six packs. <laughs> And, six um, pack. Hmm. He, he the, got... uh, the six pack you drink or the six what, what kind of six pack the handy the handy cane or what the beer or three three export or you, you, you're not a thing with which one is that, is that <laughs> you're, trying, you're trying to be smart here i'm talking about the caps now let me let me show people a picture oh, of six what pack. I'm about. oh i thought you, we you were drinking how, hey you you know how they always say that when a guy is cute he knows that he's cute like the guy just knows say fine i don't know about that You don't know about that, eh? Uh, But you can tell know. me when, when, when we were talking offline, you told me how you know you've had people literally stop you on the road and you know <laughs> and, and, and ask you questions. Um, I've ask, had good days. I've had good days. I've had bad guys, days. I've guys, had... I beg, I beg, when I check out that picture, so like check it out. Like, is this guy normal? Like, is it for real or, or is it like did they did you wear a costume in that picture where your hand is up like this? Are you wearing a costume? Oh, Is that it? was um no, that was um they just implant uh, implanted like abs on me. It wasn't it wasn't it, I didn't do anything. It's just like you know how you go and they just like implant. No, but it's just it's more about like hard work, um commitment. Um it's 80% you know nutrition, 20% fitness, 100% mindset. You have to have that Ooh. lifestyle. So when you have you when you do have that life style then it shows you know it's consistency over time so anything yeah, nothing yeah, comes easy you gotta maybe shock the never as i have man you're gonna say they just do some liposuction uh, you, <laughs> you, you, can, you, can, <laughs> you can do the shortcut but how how long will it last you know you have um other effects on that shortcut like quick fix it's not gonna last for long no, and you're gonna have a lot of like different problems right yeah so but it's it's common now nowadays if you have five thousand to ten g's you can do whatever thing you want to do like, Let me uh, know, there's a comment on the screen there from a hot girl like one of the hottest cameroonian female rappers multi-award winning artist naomi achu akin one day she's giving fire she's just like fire. oh my god naomi naomi achu yeah i don't know yeah. yeah i do i do know her She's yeah. talented. She's really she's, talented. She I know her. Me on the screen. She's fire. <laughs> Say like, hi to Naomi for me. Say hi to you. Naomi for me. Hopefully you. we Naomi. meet one day and yeah. Yes. Say hi to her for me. I hope she's she's um, uh, her family is doing well. I hope you're doing well, Naomi, with your family during this time. <laughs> Keep safe. We want to yeah yeah we want to hear as uh, uh, the next single that you're going to bring it out you know when oh, you're going to bring you are, you are late you are late David. I'm late you're late okay, I am you late you dropped a bomb the other day robo robo <laughs> man like you don't know oh. where are you living? okay I, I know right so I'm going to check that out I you will know, check that out you're not in this planet man like where are you where have you been like you're telling me that I've been working. trying. I've been quarantined. <laughs> I've been quarantined <laughs> for three months. And of course, my pastor is watching. My pastor, one of the most beautiful women I've ever met in my life. She is so beautiful. Sometimes you look at your age and you ask yourself, "Ty, my mommy, me woman find so front back." Are you talking about? <laughs> who are you talking about? My mom or, or, or pastor? I'm talking about my pastor in this case. Hey, this, yeah. <laughs> She's gorgeous. She's watching, okay? Um, Pastor Agatha <laughs> Foods. Yes, yes. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the heart. Okay, guys. So um, let's find out from David So, okay? First things first. Who is David So in a few words? This was a rocket start, but guys, thank you for staying tuned because hey, this this particular program goes test. I'm saying it in the words of Cyril Ente, my, my very good friend Cyril Ente, who is a wonderful, wonderful comedian and an actor. Um from Cameroon. Right now he's in I think Kenya, you know, pursuing other big 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 projects. So, David So, um Kia yes. David So, Kia oh. David So, who is David So? Who, who is David So? Okay. David So, um is a person that is um uh, really um outgoing, outspoken, uh God-fearing, hardworking. Um never take no for an answer um believe in whatever thing um he pushes his mind to uh -huh. um so that's david so god fearing um giving um hard working and passionate about 
everything, especially family, that's number one. Uh -huh. so that's David So in a nutshell. So, um, David, so tell us a little bit about, you know, how did you grow up? Like, where did you grow up? Um, oh, I know okay. that you're Nyangi, you're Nyangi guy. So tell me a little bit about family, how you, so, how you grew up. Family, um, I grew up in a big, big family. Um, so my mom, in my mom's side, there's seven of them. Um, four um, four girls and um, three um, three boys. Mm -hmm. So I grew up um, with my grandfather. My grandfather was really, um, his soul rest in peace, um, passed away for, I think, four, four and a half years or five years ago. If, <coughs> sorry, if not. Um, grew up in a strict family, discipline, hardworking. My granddad was really known in the neighborhood of, you know, about like just being strict and you can't really, everything is, a, they call him the British, you know, the British guy back home in Yeah. Mumba. So grew up um, in a God-fearing um, family. Uh, we believe you have to earn what you get. You can't mm -hmm. just get anything easily. Um, my grandfather taught me that. Um, right. And he was really um, given too. He was really caring. He was helping strangers. Um, helping people that we don't, we don't even know, people come and stay in a house, we don't even uh -huh. know. Um, I was growing up, I thinking that that's my brother, but that's someone that, um, a relative from somewhere else that, you know, just my granddad just just took in. Um, so, and my aunties, my uncles um, grew up, we all like, just a, a, a lovely family, and my grandma is amazing as well, hardworking, um, so, so it's a, um, that's how I grew up. So I grew up um, in a lovely and a huge family of um, four girls and three, three uncles. Um, three, so um, you you girls. came to you came to the United States some years back, and then yeah. um, you were living with your family in Maryland. And at some point, you got up. You said, "Guys, I'm packing my things. Like, then I say, my life no the gifts and I don't buy see like." <laughs> I want to transfer, uh, and you, you settled for New York City. Um, what was yeah, it like to move away from the family, you know, from the family home? Well, to... um, yeah, <clears throat> I, um, that's a good question. Um, so being in Maryland when I moved, I moved to the States 2002. Uh, be, I was in Maryland for three and a half or four years, yep. Um, went to University of uh, Maryland, UMBC. Okay. But, um, uh, what really made me to move to New York City? <clears throat> New York City is just my drive and my passion because um, I was with uh, a friend in school, and the friend said, "Oh, why don't you? You know, you have uh, an eye. Uh, I have this eye that I know you're gonna do well in modeling and stuff. I want to take a couple of pictures. I have a professional camera that I'm gonna take some pictures, and we can send it to an agency. We never know. Like, mm -hmm. we should try. We, you know, you." try you you try and if it doesn't work then that's fine so he took a couple of pictures and sent it to an agency in um, washington dc um they call it the t-h-e artist um, AM, um agency and um they called me for for um like casting for uh -huh. a runway show uh -huh. um, we had a couple of runway shows um in dc then i got uh, a gig that was um called um the wire on hbo series in oh yeah Baltimore. Oh, yeah. they were shooting they were shooting um the wire so i uh, on that i played a police officer on a couple of like two or three episodes um nothing big but that's what really transpired that that's what really sparked me to say oh you know i have this is my passion um, then I did a couple of like runway shows in Virginia and DC area. Um, I was like, you know, I have to go. Where is that? I have to go. Fashion is not in Maryland. Um, right. You want to go where, where you can excel. You yeah, can there's excel. fashion in DC, but not. Yeah. So um, New York was the main place for fashion. Um, um, then acting was like in California. Also, although New York too um, acts, and there's a lot of acting there as well. But I was mm -hmm. like, okay, that that really, that really transpired. That really pushes, uh, pushed me to like move and follow my dreams. So I got um, an agent signed um, me through that um, through that gig that I had in Baltimore, The Wire. Uh, from there, yeah. Then I moved, and I just told my family that I'm moving. Packed my stuff. <laughs> I remember the day I packed my stuff. 
Um, my mom, I told my mom, my grandfather, my, they were like, where are you going? You know, like, uh, you don't know anyone in New York City. Why yeah. are you going to New York City? It's so huge, it's so big. It's scary. Um, it's scary. So yeah. what I did was um, looked on the Craigslist. At that time, it was Craigslist. I had to look for a, a one bedroom. It's like a shoe box. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, the, it's like this shoe box. <laughs> you know, <laughs> literally this shoe box. Ah, so I had to look for uh, the shoe box, David. Like, what are you saying? You're, you're so tall and so like muscle. Like, I know, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I mean, New York City is is not. Is dense, right? And everything yeah. is small. It's not like, you know, living from Maryland to New York City is kind of like a big difference when it comes to the living, um, um, your living areas or mm -hmm. your living surroundings. You have yeah. everything big over there. Then New York City is like small. So I look for this place. Um, it's an Asian lady. Um, I had to like rent the place, and I gave myself six months. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be here for six months, and I move on to something that I really want to do. Um, so I started um, 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 hustling, and um, but the key was I had an agency already mm -hmm. signed, so I was going for castings. Then I had a, a part-time job somewhere, so I had to look for something that really will make me uh, get me. I'll be flexible while I'm doing my castings, uh, right. pursuing what I I really wanted to do, and I was really mm -hmm. passionate about fitness. Then so experienced came to light. That's how I moved to New York City. And I, I remember my mom, uh, we drove to uh, an ATM machine in Maryland and she was okay. like, okay, I'll bless you. And this is something for you. I wish you the best. And my grandparents were like, what are you go? What are you going? Where are you going again? Where are you going to, you <laughs> to do? I said, fashion. I said, fashion. My <laughs> grandfather, I remember, was like, what is that? Like, you have to be. You have to become a doctor. What a are you, doctor what are you a lawyer. doing? Are you saying? <laughs> yeah, no. There's no lawyer. A doctor. There's doctor. no like lawyer. A doctor. <laughs> I was supposed to. I was studying. I was studying um 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 biology um in school, and I was trying wow. to shoot for. Yeah. So, so they didn't get it, and it was just like after a while, it took them a long time, especially my dad. My yeah, granddad to took him yeah, a long too. time to even understand. Into, uh, but still, he didn't he didn't understand what I was doing. But uh, he was more about school and stuff. So the rest was story. You know, um, it was history. You okay. Know? So um, you said that whenever you went to New York City, you're like, okay, man, I've got to do something about it. How was the fitness born? Like out of all careers, yes, you wanted to be an actor and everything. So how did it turn out that today, that's like who you are like when you say so David a lot of people associate you immediately with fitness and training how how did you come about oh yeah into that niche? um yeah um because I was really I loved soccer we call it back home Boy, football, yeah. right so I really love I went to uh, a boarding school back home St. Joseph's College everyone knows that mm -hmm. um, one of the best schools in Cameroon and I played soccer football uh -huh. um, in town and with my neighborhood and stuff like that so i love um, fitness a long time ago before i came to new york city so i wanted something that i'm really passionate about acting mm -hmm. was something that i wanted to do but it was like it's not a full-time thing even modeling is not a full-time thing right so i said okay let me look for something that i'm really passionate about mm -hmm why I'm doing something else that I want to pursue. You know what I mean? So fitness um, came to light. So then I created my own company, the LLC called So, so Experience okay. um, um, LLC, which is the fitness. That's how, because that will help me to be flexible. Um, I couldn't do a nine to five job because it's going to keep me blocked. I'm not going to be flexible with my time. Uh -huh. So I wanted something that will help me to pursue what I want to do, in, you know? Yeah. In the long run. Okay, so now you got into fitness after <laughs> wanting to be an actor and everything. Like, how did you get known? Like, how did you get the word out for people to know that, hey, we can actually trust this guy with our fitness goals and everything and nutrition goals and all whatnot? Was it that you just went to Central Park? Because I remember one once we had an interview, I had to meet you out there at Central Park. My brother, then this guy won't finish my abdominal. Let me say, I do abdominal in my back. <laughs> no, um, 
it's a lifestyle. It's not an obsession, right? It's a lifestyle. Right. And uh, I mean, I'm in a city where they take it seriously and um, um, it's a lifestyle. So there's some cities that they don't take it seriously. There's some yeah. countries That's or true. areas that they don't take it seriously. But New York City is, um, New York City, all those bigger cities, they take it seriously. So, um, so experience is all about bringing out the best version of yourself. You can be someone else. You can be the best version of yourself. Right. Like I am the best version of myself. Oh, definitely. So I represent, I represent the so experience. So so experience is bringing out the best version of yourself. So you can be me. You can be the best version of yourself. So right. Um, that is what I do. That is the method that I used to um, because it's not just physically it's mentally on the inside out um, so I have referrals from clientels um, um, I started you know small now I'm a small um, high-end clientels that I have yeah. yeah so it's more about yeah so David you yeah. told me you told me that um, off camera that you actually right now you have clients that are millionaires billionaires and stuff like that how did you come up with yeah getting those people it's your work, your work ethics and your results. And when you do a good job with one person, the person tells the friend. The next person. And if you, you, yeah, the next person, that's how I, I do it by referrals. Would you so think really, that? And people have contracts with me and um, you don't just come and train with me for one day or a month and say, oh, okay. No, you have to sign a contract and mm -hmm. it's three months, six months, nine months, a year. So, so that you can see results. And once you see that results, right, you're going to go tell your friend, oh, I have this person that would take care of you. So yeah. that's how I built, I built my name through that. I have a platform that I can, I can work with. Um, mm -hmm. I have clients that they have, they've seen results and they talk to other people. And for the past how many years now, I've um, built something that, you know, I can only grow more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Would you say that your physique <laughs> has played a lot in in who you are, like you know, in in succeeding? In uh, your... I, I, yeah, I think it yeah it plays a bigger role as well. But um, notwithstanding, um, uh, you have to have the experience, the talent, and um, you have to be experienced when it comes to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know you have to perfect your craft as well. So it's not just the looks. The looks will help with um, uh, being like uh, a trainer or a coach, um, the looks would help definitely, but you have to know your craft. You have to perfect your craft so that it comes easy. So if you put your craft, uh, then you put your looks, then it's so it's easy for you to, to go, uh, you know, open doors and do a lot of stuff, but you have to do it with dignity and um, uh, dignity though. Dignity is the key. You can't abuse what God gave you, right? I, I like I like that word dignity because when you just talk about dignity, immediately I'm thinking, oh my gosh, um, does that mean that? Because there's no way that you tell me that you've not had those kind of crazy offers from people, you know, wanting you to do <laughs> to do extra services for them, like you know, whoa, hire um, you to be a fitness coach, like a personal fitness coach, and then when you go to their personal space, they start being personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um it comes with the territory it's not just fitness uh, in entertainment it comes with you know modeling acting um, mm -hmm. um any any entertainment any services like this um you're gonna get people that will cross the line but it's up to you as a coach it's up to you as an actor it's up to you as an entertainer on um which route you want to take um the easy you route sell your soul the easy route or the tougher you know the harder route okay. i've had both i've had the easy route but i didn't choose it because that's not who i am um so i want to like so, so what sleep at night tell, and get what up. you're trying to tell us now is that uh, if somebody offers you or maybe you've had it in the past like okay let me rephrase that question <laughs> has it ever occurred to you that somebody offers you something like a really juicy package for some extra curricular services as a fitness coach yeah it's, it's, uh, yeah you've had a, you've had people like they they invite you to their houses and they invite you to like fancy trips what is the way, way to they, do for them i mean 
uh, you go there when you go there you find you find out right so um, let, let us know a little bit because hey we're not in your world no. tell us like you you've gone to so fast no the, the people the people the people that they invite you to to have like parties with them or you know um uh, hang out with them and you know some drugs and some like sexual advances but it's up to you to like really like Say, no that's not what i do you know what i mean that's not what <laughs> that's not what i do so you have you know you have those kind of people you have not um fortunately my clients are not um like that um my clients all everyone you have that crazy, I've, I've clients. Trained, have crazy right. clients but i've had I, i've had people that approach even on social media you have it's crazy people so, so tell so, you so that oh, i'm you. gonna pay your flight to to come to yeah. europe and let's have fun it's, let's have fun crazy. oh my gosh yeah. so tell me tell me um i can imagine that if we like snoop in on your dm right now on instagram for example you, you have a <laughs> following on instagram i'm sure we're going to see a lot of crazy pictures like people sending you all those angle pictures in your dm but, but those, those pictures i mean you don't have to look at them you just got to delete them but you, gonna, you, know, can't, you can't you can't you can't okay, you can't really you are telling me like something <laughs> with your inbox some nice stuff you don't look at it you'll be like hey I know we'll look when I look a little small. I know so when you look, when you look, when you look, what happens then? What are you gonna do with it? Nothing. I mean, it's just it's just that you're gonna have you're gonna have people that they send you stuff like that. But it's up uh -huh. to you to um either you entertain it or you like just delete it. So have you ever been tempted? Um, like, man, you look at something you're like tight see before. No, no, because I'm 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 good, I'm happy where I am, I'm content. You have to be content with what you have okay right. you can't go and you know the, the grass the grass is not greener all, all the time on, not the, always other side, greener you know? on the other side i see i see it's always greener people, it's not it's not always been on the other side a lot of people yeah to, so to misunderstand that you know um you have questions here yeah. i don't know why I'm, not, I'm unable to put these questions on the screen keep your comments coming keep giving me the likes you know just hit that like button share with your friends there's a lot of juicy stuff guys david so <laughs> is going to spill the tea on the show today like a lot of women have been asking they don't see a ring on your finger they're like hey maybe we'll oh get a ring maybe. on my finger very soon you're gonna see a ring on, on uh on my finger but it's not it's not the time yet i'll you be the first you you be the first person to know when the <laughs> ring is on my finger yeah but so it's coming so let the girls and understand inbox like you know i get friends already don't dm me they're like man girl hook me up now hook me up with that guy like man he's so fine and i'm like uh i'm not sure see no the guy, <laughs> no that uh, this is uh, so experienced me i'm not i'm not in, in on the market i'm taken already hey so i have a, i have a i have a girlfriend i have a girlfriend what so a there's no like i know right uh, yeah, I what a heartbreak <laughs> <laughs> no i do have a girlfriend we happily together um yeah so um that's about it uh I'm, okay, i want to talk cool. more about I it that. i was gonna <laughs> dig in a little bit because you know we saw some very very <laughs> pictures about you you know those kind of pictures where you're just like on top of water floating like hey okay, mama, me. Oh. so i did a i bit. mean it's 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 like you know you, everyone has this um lifestyle right so right. you just gotta have fun uh live your life uh to the fullest life is short so yeah just That's as true. long as you're happy as long as you do the things that you you're happy and makes you happy um so you gotta mm -hmm. live life to the fullest that's true that's true so um david so um yes now let's talk a little bit about um your foundation um you told yes. yourself you told me off camera you said this thing to me you said um gwen i'm so passionate about helping people and recently you've been doing a lot in that direction with your foundation so inspired foundation um you've been going out there to provide hot meals to um you know the the, the frontline workers <laughs> out there man i just want to say thank you for that man like um what, what prompted you to do that like what prompted you to take that risk um, it's kind of risky to be I know. Out, like you know yeah it is risky but at the end of the day it's your it's your community right where you right. live you have to be the solution you don't want to be the, the problem so right. if you can help in any way to help 
your fellow brothers and sisters or your neighbors that you live with um that's a that's something that is really um god fearing okay. so you know as, as you have to help your your brothers and sisters you have to help your community um where you live at um so i i did it because i was really I, i'm passionate i'm passionate about helping people so um it came from my granddad long time ago when i was a baby, um, a young boy growing up in uh, with other people in in the household that I don't even know, thinking that they are brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. but they're not really brothers and sisters. They're just from a really far, far relative. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I would say that. There. You know, so I grew up. I grew up in that. Yeah. I would say that that's actually. Yeah, I grew like up. I grew up in that. Like. Like loving and sharing, not discriminating. You know, just loving one another without any any restriction you know respecting everybody around yeah. you as an elder as an uncle auntie there are people that i call uncle auntie today that we don't have no blood relation there are people that i call brothers yeah. that we don't have no blood relation at all but because in africa we've grown up with that mentality that we don't show discrimination like it's not because this is your biological father that he's the only father that you have okay he has so many children that even he didn't father them you know but you know that's how yeah we, definitely that's how we grew up in Africa <laughs> yeah that's, that's a beautiful thing okay it's it's so so yeah so that's what really made me um because I, that's not the first the the first projects that I've I've done a couple of like three projects back home through the So Inspired Foundation mm -hmm. um recently the past two months we uh, So Inspired Foundation donated um uh, uh two hospitals donated a hundred hot um lunch boxes for the first respondents and yeah. nurses on those two hot in those two hospitals um you have the brooklyn um hospital and the kings county hospital so those are two ho uh, hospitals in brooklyn that's where i live at right now uh, i've been living um in brooklyn for the past if not five years now um mm -hmm. i was in the city then i moved to brooklyn um so that's my uh, this is my area so everyone is you know uh uh affected of you know uh with this this whole coronavirus thing um um you know someone that is um um had it or you know someone passed away everyone yeah. has someone that you know is is crazy so um i wanted to be a part of uh, so inspire foundation wanted to be a part the part of a solution helping the community um so so that's why I did those um, things and it came from the heart. So um, then part of the, <clears throat> what really helped me too is the, the sneakers, uh, the So Inspired, um, um, So New York sneakers. Uh -huh. um, that really helped in uh, funding some of the projects that are on the So Inspired Foundation. Okay. Um, this, if you want to like really check it out, it's going to be on the website. It's called SoNewYork.com. Um, you have like and so and and patterns on it. NSO New York dot com. Now it's New York, is it the full New York or is it just NY? Um New York. Um the full New York. So NSO New York dot com. So uh I created this sneakers, uh, we call it sneakers with a purpose. So I created this mm -hmm. to fund projects under the So Inspired Foundation. So I've done right. a lot of projects um, because of this um, sn sneakers as well. So part of the mm -hmm. sales goes to So Inspired Foundation. Um, like uh, the last project that we did back home is 30 girls that were internally displaced due to the political unrest in the south <coughs> uh, southwest region in Boya, Kumba, all those areas. So we helped them with menstrual hygiene education and um, um, did a, um, a program um for um like a vocational training program for those kids um <laughs> at the ages of 12 to 18 years old um so to help them some of them they want to do k train they want to do um hairdressing stylists um so we're sponsoring them now for the next um it's been six months now we're sponsoring them to become leaders to uh -huh. become to look forward to something because they're internally displaced they don't have anything to do so so inspired foundation is helping with that so everything that we've been doing everything that we've been doing um is just um through the the, the sneakers and and with contributions as well
Right. So um, you were you were just telling me off camera that right now your sneakers are on sale. First of all, let's talk about the story of how the sneakers were born. Like, why did you come up with a sneakers brand, man? People come up with clothing lines and all whatnot because, man, you're fine. Um, I would say if somebody mm -hmm. wouldn't maybe think that you're a fashion designer, you're not a fashion designer, but you know how to put no. fashion together. Um, yeah, yeah. Why, why, instead of getting a clothing line like so many other fashionistas out there, why did you settle for a sneakers um, brand? Yeah, I, I settled for that because, um, uh, first of all, I'm a trainer. Um, so in New York City, we, we go from point A to point B. Uh, so I do a lot of house calls. I do a lot of training at home. So you, st you stay on your feet all day in New York because you're walking a lot. So I wanted something that was comfortable, classy, and clean. Uh -huh. So that's how so New York came um, to light. I was like, okay, I want to create something that is uh, put a little bit of touch into it. I put a little bit of pattern um, that uh, represents royalty back in Africa, like Ooh. some of the patterns inside um, represents yeah. royalty, like the chiefs, um, they wear this kind of pattern on, oh. uh, inside. Um, yeah, so I wanted something that has a little That's bit of unique. the African touch, but at the same time is clean, classy, um, um, comfortable to wear because in New York City, um, if you're standing on your feet all day, you need something that is really comfortable. Yeah. So that's why I started with um, 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 the sneakers. And the sneakers is sneakers with a purpose. It's not just, oh, I want to look good. But mm -hmm. it represents helping people and it represents um, just classy. Sometimes um, if you, you want to wear something class, classy, it's just simple. It looks fresh and clean. Yeah. Well, that that's really beautiful. Like, I mean, when we hear you talking like that, a lot of times you see people maybe when they start succeeding in their careers, they never really think about doing something that's going to benefit people per se. It's always about like a personal gain. Like, what am I gaining from this? How much can I gain from this? They wouldn't think about maybe even giving back. So many people will say, oh, maybe when I will get one million, then I'll give back, you know, like, um, why yeah, you... but the thing is, it's not, it's not, it's not, Gwen, it's like, I have the saying, you have to, um, my legacy, is, I want people to uh, remember me, um, it's more about no, give more gone. and take less, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so give, um, give more and take less. The le you, what, what is the legacy you want to leave when you, life is too short, what do you want to leave? Mm -hmm. You want to help people, you want to impact people, you want to, touch people, um, like people, um, their hearts, you want to change their, 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 their way of thinking. They mm -hmm. want, you want to help them one way or another. Yeah. Um, sometimes you help not by giving someone money. You can help through knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can help through being there for someone words and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I, it's more about giving more and taking less. So, right. um, um, uh, that is what I want to be known for if I'm, you know, um, uh, when I'm gone and okay, so um yeah, so um you were in the fashion industry for a while, man. You got some crazy pictures. Whoa. When people look at those pictures, they're like, man, I don't want to look beyond the picture, guy. <laughs> 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 I see my big brother NS Kanjo watching. Thank you so much, big bro. We're learning a lot from you. Thank you for your amazing job that you're doing with Apex One Radio. Oh my gosh um That's thank nice. you so much so hey david so let's talk about his fashion yeah. career, man. Like, look at that body man like hey um whoa <laughs> <laughs> so with the fashion it's just um what wow i've traveled picture, all over man? what was going on in that which picture the picture, I don't see the picture on the screen where you have um you're on the runway and you're dressed like um, you have like some oh my god that was in K um that was in johannesburg in santon city um, one of the mess, uh, Mercedes, uh, fashion week, uh, oh, yeah. um, the South African Mercedes fashion week. Mm -hmm. So I was there, I did a couple of shows with, um, different designers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I flew there and that was the same time that I shot some of the, like the campaigns for the GQ magazine. Right. Um, then I flew to Cape town. I was in Cape town. I, I had an agency in Cape town for, for a long time. I lived in Cape town for close to a year. Um, in Cape Town, uh, modeling and doing some campaigns and so why did you say that? I've done... Why did you say that? Was it not happening enough for you, or was the market too saturated? Like what? What took you out of? Um, in Cape Town, in Cape Town is a good market, but it's just like 
when you're new as a model, um, you want to go there and create your portfolio. And um, when you create your portfolio um, from there, then you can you can branch out and come to New York City or go to Europe. Mm -hmm. So that's where people like models and they, Is that the they go like yeah, that's different. That's it's a hub where you where yeah where you create you you it's like doing your resume and you look for something bigger. So yeah, I met a couple of people there. Um, even. Um, Valerie Ayana, I was just um, met, uh, we met in Cape Town. You just took that right um, out of I my had mouth. To... You took that right out <laughs> yeah. of my mouth. Like, like, I was she's... getting ready to ask you the question. Like, <laughs> oh, really? It's burning, man. Like, it's burning. Like, she's okay. like, she's my, well, you guys like my like, little sister. Were you guys on ITEM? Huh? Man? Like, were you guys on ITEM? No, 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 no. She was my, no, no, no. Let's get that straight. She, she, she is my little sister. Um, So she, when she came to Cape Town, I was there. Um, so I took her to my agency. She got signed with my agency at that time. So ever since she's been under my wings, when we went a long time ago in Cape Town, when she started modeling. So she is my um, really um, good sister, um, uh, uh, little sister. So no no strings, nothing, nothing fishy. So she's always sure. been there and I love her. She's a so, great um, person now. Look at, she's doing amazing stuff right now. Yeah, so for the little story guys, Valerie yeah. Ayuna is used to be Miss Cameroon 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe I'm getting my dates wrong, but she was actually Miss, one of the most successful Miss Cameroon that Cameroon has ever had. I would tell you because from the day that she was crowned Miss Cameroon to today, she has managed to stay on top of her game. And yes, yeah, so David so is telling us here that um he actually um they actually you guys let did you guys live together in South Africa or was it just um yeah we we left uh, we lived uh, we lived um in Cape Town uh, in the, the modeling um, agency uh, the same house um uh, yeah we lived for almost um three months <laughs> we lived there for three months we lived together nothing nothing no she's like I said she. <laughs> Okay. I mean, she's, she's my gorgeous, sister with nothing. I took gorgeous, her under my wings. Huh? She's a gorgeous woman. And yeah, then, she know, is. She is beautiful. Kind of so she's when you put that and, and no, yeah, I so had to. Like maybe bomb. No, 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 no. So yeah, I closed the word. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. Um, <laughs> she's um um she's my little sister. We, you know, you no, can't you can't do that. Right now. I bet it's clear. It clear for Nasai for the so David so and Valeria Ayena, they were never an item. They've never been an item. Okay, they never ever yeah. follow. Yep. Okay, they never ever do the anything when they think about. They never happen. Yeah. So now brother and sister relationship, eh? They stay for the same house in go. South Africa, but no touching at all at all. Was yeah. just yeah. Is, sleep well sweet dreams and uh, you know that yeah no extracurricular activities between them too is it clear guys it clear okay thank you all for for confirming <laughs> that 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 story right now so hey i see that that the picture on the screen is you and puff daddy or he doesn't call himself pop daddy anymore he calls himself Didi. um i call himself Didi. Didi, man so, what's happening there man yeah. your, your, I mean, that was you're connected, that was man. The, that was the after party for the all black runway show. That was like 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe I might miss miss uh, messed up the the years, but we the did day. a runway show. Then we did a runway show for at that time it was like Sean John was really going hard on all black. So we did a runway show. Then that was the after party that we went to. At, mm -hmm. um, I think it was at um, Tao, um, there's a restaurant, a uh, nightclub at the time, Tao is still functioning right now. So mm -hmm. that was the after party. And um, so he was just like thanking everyone that participated. Then um, he's like, came, man, he was like, like this way, man. You're looking like, yeah, it's like, which, yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a good, like really a, a black excellence. So he's a role model. Um, so he was like, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're young and you have more, you know, more ahead of you. Keep pushing, you know, like then we took a picture. Of it. it was just like congratulating me because I was one of the models as well. Uh -huh. So he was just kind of congratulating me for the work that was really done that night um, after party. 
it was good it was good um so i now he's he's one of the we one of the biggest role models for especially for the black community you know at this point we have to we have to really take fitness seriously because um it's not just um it's just your well-being um yeah you have a lot of like people especially you know not only black people it's like a lot of heart attack high blood pressure cholesterol um mm-hmm. the food that we eat in as well uh, african food cameroonian food is so good but we have to we have to um we have to make sure that the way the way we cook it we cook it in a healthy way because all this red oil that we put on foods and uh, all these ingredients that we put on african food don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i love i love our food i love everything about our food okay, we now have to eat it with moderation let me just ask you like just pick up into the, into that you know wh- what kind of food do you like what kind of food does david so eat to stay in shape do you still eat some arrow, arrow, of, I, eat, uh, I eat i eat arrow but i eat arrow when i go to dc maryland maryland area where my family is um i'm in new york city i don't see any arrow here for the whole past quarantine i haven't for the past you three know, months i've been in new york city without traveling i haven't had any arrow Hi. because there's no one to cook me arrow. Yes. um so 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 but what i'm saying is we have to take fitness seriously we have to um um it's good for your well-being it's good for your family it's good to raise your family in that uh, mindset uh, because you want to be there for your family you want to be there for your kids you want to teach them that environment of being healthy and active lifestyle so that you you guys grow um and you know as long as you know you stay healthy uh for a long period of time and uh, even when you're older you want to be healthy you want to look healthy and be there for your family that's the key so we we can be drinking all the beers and eating all this food and we have to eat in moderations too with you know in portions we we don't know when to stop you know, and to stop me, drinking. And like, do you yeah. have any um, weight loss diet plan to share with us? Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> weight loss diet plan. Um, um, when you when you talk about diet, right? I think you have an expiration date on that when you talk about dieting. Um, so I, I would say a sustainable um, lifestyle. I would say something that's sustainable. Um, there's mm-hmm. no because when you put diet, it's like okay i'm gonna eat this diet i'm gonna be on this diet then after you're done with this diet you go back to your old habits right so you want to look for something you want to look for something that is sustainable as long as if you look for something that's sustainable it's good for you anything Mm -hmm. that is not sustainable is not good for you so i'm not gonna say what kind of diet plan is good for you no every everybody is different so if you pick something that is sustainable and it's working for you it's good for you so right. if you want to eat just salad all day every day uh 365 days as long as you're doing it consistently consistency consist consistency over time is the key the right key. so you have so to make sure you're consistent so important. like consistency in every aspect of life everything it's so yes. important it's like studying every day to get the best results it's like to get the experience yes. you need to keep putting that work in you will not just have something in mind and then tell yourself that okay now i got it i can go and sleep you know yeah so you know, i get i get calls i get emails and i get texts uh, i get um stuff from facebook about my yeah. own like cameronians and africans and they're talking about because our food is really heavy and we have a and lot of stuff going on and it's and so it's good. delicious and it's, it's so good but you have to eat that in portion you have to like earn it you have to earn it all right you can be eating uh for an arrow every day and it's like that you want to have a six pack yeah, it's two, not going to gonna happen to guinness or two or then, three. then guinness and all that it's not it's not that's heart attack that's that more like true. cholesterol it's, 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 you know what i mean you know you add some small pop grips on top like when we go out for our events you know like uh family events and stuff like that social gatherings man what kind of food do you see there if you go and put salad on the table who is going to eat it now i'm going to chop that 
grass. Oh, you like, see, you see, those are the things that you, <laughs> you know, you can have your cake and eat it too, right? Right. So if you want to live a healthy lifestyle, um, number one is push and control. <laughs> Uh, if you if you want to like you want to be healthy you want to lose weight you have to sign up for a good like food regimen like meaning you have to know what you're eating you have mm -hmm. to have a method of eating first before you yeah. sign up to a gym you can't you, you don't do it the other way around because 80 percent is what, what you what eat you say, like little percent is fitness. imagine that if you have to give a tip to people right now that can help them um on on how to eat what would you say is the time like what time should you stop eating during the day and what should be your last meal so the first meal? yeah you have to you you eat three hours before you go to bed um so that you digest yeah. and you before you go to bed right three right. hours uh, minimum <clears throat> three hours before you go to bed um uh eight to ten glasses of water a day um that'll be good you want to eat in small portions you you know your protein should be the your palm like this, you know what I mean? Uh, your carbs should be like that, and your fat should be your thumb, right? Uh -huh. So protein, carbohydrates, and your th your thumb should be the fat. Yeah, so you so want to use your palm as, in moderation. you want to really? use your palm as, yeah, you want to use your palm as a tool, okay? Your five fingers. You want to use that. You want to use that as a tool to mm -hmm. do the measurements when it comes to uh, if you tr if you're going somewhere to eat. This this is what you use to measure your portions. Use this. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mm -hmm. you can take this anywhere you go. You can leave this at home. So okay. <laughs> so then so wait till wait till wait till wait till yeah. Let me say no. You know somebody started to talk about all that fitness stuff and so that fitness like that. Man, move back keep back fitness more. I want to hear juicy, juicy talk. Okay, what was the craziest offer you've ever had? Like the craziest experience you've ever had in either of the roles that you've played, either as an actor, as a fitness coach, or even with your foundation <sighs> that has ever existed. Like what is oh, the crazy. That wow, has happened? crazy. I've had uh not really crazy. I've had a couple of things like people sending messages that um it was like the pictures like you said pictures people sending pictures and people um what kind of pictures trying to pay for what kind of pictures? flight what kind for of me pictures? to come what to kind of like nude no, nude, no, nude no, like no. nude pictures nude pictures well, like nude well, pictures well, they well, want well, to like well, oh they want to see me they want to see me in nude they can pay whatever they want to pay for me to can pay to lots of nude. money for um, that or they want to like uh, I'm all right. I'm like you can go on. You can go to my platform on Instagram. You you see me there. <laughs> so, but um, like or oh, travel travel to Europe or like somewhere like they you know pay your flight to come have for like a, a sex party or something like that. That's one of the craziest. Like a sex Hello, party. Do they even know yeah. that your mother is? You mentioned um a contract, a contract that you. You know, you went through that contract and it seemed like everything was going good with a big company. I don't want to call the name of the company yeah. because, you know, but you went through that yeah, contract um, and it was good. And then suddenly, what happened to that contract? We were waiting for no, you it to was, it was on just, billboard and representing this. No, big yeah, it was just, it's just a person. It wasn't, it wasn't the right thing. I didn't have the right feeling for it because I felt at the end of the contract or at the end of like signing something on a paper, I was more about okay, um, um, let's that you know let's meet up in a hotel and do you know certain things. It wasn't right, but you, ah. it, it comes with in California. It comes with those you know um, most people that they are in the top right now. Some of them. Either they saw their soul or uh -huh. through hard work, you know. In in Hollywood, you have a lot of like people that they take short um, shortcuts to uh -huh. get to where they want to get to. So I'm not gonna sell myself. I've had a photographer before, very very huge, big photographer, big like you're talking about oh. big time. Um, but he was he wasn't he was shady. He was for something else. It wasn't. It didn't work out because what did he, want he was looking you? for something else. What did he want from you? What did he want? Yeah. Like, sleep with you know. 
go to bed with is it a woman me is it a woman no no it's a guy it's a guy, a guy. wonderful mm -hmm. sure so these things are always just here from far like that. It's actually things that happen. It happens. It happens. It happens a lot. Brother. Yeah, it happens. It happens on a on a daily. That's that's the industry. So, I but mean, you have to. Okay, I want I want to kind of like graph the picture a little bit. So you're working with this guy. He's taking your pictures. How did he open up to let you know that this is what he's thinking in his head? How did you know about it? If someone tell you to come to his room what does that mean well, how did you in think that he doesn't want to take more pictures of you like why would you just no, think that it was take you how are you gonna how are you gonna take a picture in the room like what do you mean by is it in the studio or in the room yeah, what are you talking that, about do we know you to take pictures in the room like i mean in those days like especially when we'll be ever going go stay with some fine hotel you never believe if you stay inside maybe you travel like whenever i used to go for mission you want to stand on the balcony and take pictures you want to be here taking pictures so maybe that's the kind of you know you wanted to do a indoor kind of you know together one by one so professional setting a professional setting is different from your private room mm -hmm. so if we walk in if we want to walk you're going to walk by inviting someone to your office you're not going to invite someone to your room right you you turn down the offer and and what happened between your your working relationship with him did it just end there or you know yeah it, it had to stop because it had to stop i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna delete that him. That said, okay, you know what? If you're not gonna come to my room for special private, obviously, obviously, I stopped it because it wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Did they? So come it wasn't what I wanted. Because I have this friend in. New Why would they come after me? I have this friend in New York City who is a, she's a, a model, and so she said that <clears> she actually had an experience where she was working with an agency, and she had no idea that you know the client that they were trying to set her up with was into some shady business okay so what happened is that they paid a lot of money to her agency to take her abroad and she was just going to play the role of a muse on on a boat you know to a group of old men and they were going to pay her loads of so there's yeah there's different the different types of modeling and so that's the thing not, is, that's a different so they type. told her like right before she was like getting ready she thought it was like a real deal like maybe she's just going to be a figurant like you know just stand around and you know just be beautiful she didn't know that there was something more shady about it but then just before she was gonna board her flight like the next day um her agent just kind of like whispered it to her that you know she should try to be smart okay and he kind of like squinted his eye and he's like you're a beautiful girl um this is a big one-time opportunity you gotta be smart okay there's gonna be a bunch of rich old guys on that on that you know on that boat trip you know um so when you go so out there, it happens it, yeah it happens I, I, it happens if they That's... want something extra if they want some extracurricular activities um just make sure that you try to you know don't lose this contract and she's like what do you mean by don't lose this contract and the guy was like come on you're not a baby to understand this you should be able to, to you know you know just don't lose this contract this is one of the biggest clients that we've had so far and you know that was when she understood that they're calling her for something totally different it was not a job it was a job on a job basically so she pulled out of that and they came after her they threatened her i think because um these people had paid some money to her agency already and then the fact that she turned down the offer um at that point it, it brought a lot of problems you know with her and, and if you i would i think they have to go to the agency because they didn't pay the money they shouldn't come to her directly they have to so go they were to the agency her, because they her, they're gonna mess up her career she's never gonna get any contract anymore um in new york city rest assured she just made them lose a big contract and you know that kind of thing so she said that she literally had to leave town for some months just to run away from that but she had to go back after some time and she kind of like changed her location changed her phone number and everything but she was actually stalked they stalked her and they I think I think um, you have to know what you're signing the papers that you sign you have to know which country, uh, agency you're signing for you have to read between the lines on any contract any it's not it's not just modeling in any contract 
you want to write or you want to read between the line and really know what you're signing it's like are we gonna be hearing um some good news very soon like here comes the bride yeah very soon um very soon i don't have any any dates but very soon you like i said is you're gonna be the first person, we'll be the to first know to know guys our this. ears and eyes are open we're waiting we're, <sighs> we want to be part of that wedding you know wedding day hey mama let me start fixing my clothes and my shoes <laughs> Like you, you come, you have an alma mater that you're so proud of, and you usually defend your alma mater so strongly that sometimes I'm like, ah, ma come over here, so bad, and I will say, I beg, say, why are hmm. people who just talk loud? Like, why are you guys so proud? Like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, wait till election here because every 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 three sobans, every three sobans, there's two leaders. In every okay, three so sobans, there are two leaders. Man, you guys are too proud. Ah, uh, why are we proud with we we proud with 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 uh we have the backing for it. You can't be proud and you don't have anything to show for it. So Sobans are known for um leadership, they're known for success, they're known for hard working, they're known for uh one of the smartest people uh, in Cameroon. They're known for all that. They What's the the thing that you're most proud of? being a so bad you have a lot of role models in in uh coming from sasse yeah. coming from saint joseph's college sasse so it's a it's a great um, um school um you have a lot of like i said um a lot of people with leaders born leaders yeah. from sasse yeah college um leaders are born in sasse what are the projects that you're currently working on with your foundation we have um, ongoing right now is back home in Boyer. Mm -hmm. We have kids that that's been spot they they've been sponsored right now to yeah. do vocational training. Mm -hmm. um, um, due to the, um, the 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 political unrest uh, that's going on in Cameroon, so they're gonna be on that program for six months. Um, so um, tailoring, hairdressing, um, catering. So the ages of twelve to eighteen. So they're gonna be finishing I think next month. Mm -hmm. six months vocational training mm -hmm. um so that is what is going on right now but with the COVID 19 projects we've already done the two projects here in um, new york city uh, we're working on doing something else but it's on the uh on the wraps right now and the foundation is so inspired foundation.org so, so nso inspired. inspired it yeah inspired with a d then foundation everything one letter so inspired foundation.org you go there you're gonna check you're gonna see all the projects and the current projects that we working on right now uh, which is the COVID-19 um, donating meals but uh, we're gonna keep you guys updated on that and um, the so New York sneakers so New York.com is 30% off right now um sneakers with a purpose, sneakers with so a purpose guys. i want my brothers and yeah i want my brothers and sisters to show support and get a pair it's 30 percent the use the code the code is fresh pk hey. so when you put that code you're gonna you're gonna get the 30 percent off fresh picking, guys. from That's the sneakers fresh picking yeah so you never like forget where you're from fresh and Pekin is P-I-K-I-N, Fresh Pekin. So you use the code to get the 30% off. And um, once you buy this, it's going to help a kid. It's going to help two or three kids. Oh, that's amazing. God bless, well your heart. Heart. God bless your heart. So, um, yeah, so thank you. That. Okay, so... Um, so, so New York com. Right. So we yeah. noticed that you, um, you were collaborating <sighs> with a couple of young Cameroonian entrepreneurs in the likes of Stan Lyon, what exactly were you guys um, working on at that time? Um, we, we're not, um, Stan Lyon is, um, uh, he's in Maryland. He, is, uh, he has a clothing line. Um, I just wanted to show support with, you know, as we as Cameroonians, we have to come together. Uh -huh. um, in this industry, uh, in every industry, we have to come together in order for us to grow. Yeah. So there's nothing you can do what you want to do on your on your on your lane. Yeah. I can do whatever thing I want to do on my lane. But at the end of the day, we have to collaborate to look at the bigger picture. We have to come together.